Okay, so um, let's begin by re recapping questions from quiz 21. The first question, the idea was to be able to copy from f1.txt to f2.txt with the assumptions that basically each uh, the file f1 is uh, a file of integers 1, 5, 27 and so on and you want to be able to copy them to f2.txt and uh, the options that were provided, uh, most of the options were uh, messed up, syntactically messed up. So you can't redirect from an O file to an integer, you redirect from an integer to an O file, you redirect from an in I file, in input file to an integer. Okay, so that itself should have got you the wrong answers out and the right answer is where you are reading from in file and writing to O file and uh, what are O file and I, I file are objects of type IF stream, I'm sorry, OF stream and IF stream respectively. The additional construct here which uh, I hope some of you have noted is this while in file greater than greater than I. Now this is actually a, a very compact way of saying keep reading till the file ends, okay. So basically what happens at the end of file, in file greater than greater than i, so let us say the file ends here, so end of file eof end of file so at end of file which is also abbreviated as eof this read returns false not at actually it's after just after okay so because of this while in file greater than equal greater than i basically we are saying that read until end of file that is what we are saying just a nice compact way of exhausting the uh, input in the file. So here is um, here is how you can uh, So this is a reading from in file and writing and it just works, okay. So you are able to read and write. The second question, you had a my struct and a function d that returned pointer to my struct. And therefore, when you say, for example, in the, in the main, you say E equals D A B C, then you already have a pointer to some um, struct allocated in heap and you are returning the pointer to it and E. So all you need is E to be of type pointer, okay, let us look at E, E should be of type pointer to struct, um, pointer to my struct, my struct star, but need not be, but need not be allocated memory beforehand. Right? So therefore, what should be expression to? My struct star e is good enough, you do not need to have any new. So new not required. On the other hand, if you look at, um, if you look at C, now 
immediately after expression one, I am say I am dereferencing to C, getting its x, getting it y, getting I mean and assigning to them. So which means that after expression one, C should have been allocated space. It should have been of type pointer to my struct. Okay, so C should be of type pointer to my struct and should also be allocated space in uh, in heap using new and therefore my struct star c equals new my struct that seems the valid call. Now it is not that you cannot assign space to uh, E, you can, it will be, it is unnecessary. So just going by this, you will find that uh, all the other options are invalid, only this option, this option is the only correct option. Let us go back, going back to so while in file, uh, sorry, this was second one. The first option, expression was required to be replaced by my struct C. This is wrong. You cannot have my struct C. It has to be a pointer. So just by the reasoning, uh, that's eliminated. And also the third option, where E is of not, not of type pointer, is also ruled out. Okay. So there's only one option that survives. Is it clear? Question 3, which of the following statements are correct? So this is very obvious, this is basically from the class, directly from the class. So the first statement says that I assign some space in the heap, new and then the same IPTR is updated with another space in the heap rendering the first pointer meaningless and therefore um, this is the memory leak you create this this is the leaked memory so this is a correct option the second option if pointer is the only variable that contains the address of a variable on heap Right. So, for example, in the the above example one itself. So, to prevent such a memory leak, what must you do? Well, before you assign it some new value, you should delete, delete PTR. So, ideally, you should have executed a delete PTR after the first new, if at all you want to assign it some new space, or before it's about to go out of scope. That's also uh, the other case where memory leak can happen. So this is also second, the second option is also correct. The third one, dangling reference. So IPTR, I create some new space in a heap and then I delete it and then I try and dereference memory that is deleted. This is the example of dangling reference dangling uh, pointer okay so this is a recap so there was a fourth option here the fourth option you can delete iptr as many times as you want even if it becomes null there will be no compilation error. Okay, the string class is a typical example. You remember, uh, we will come to that when we designed the string class, we for safety, when we were doing assignment, we were deleting the pointer even if it, if it were already null. So that should not be an issue. Okay, so uh, let us now recap from lecture four, uh, from the previous discussion, introducing new and delete and now we will uh, we'll quickly conclude. So we we said that uh, 
uh, we wanted to design the string class that caters to this main program and our step one, our step one was moment we looked at these um, calls, we were trying to design the signatures, signatures or the, uh, the way the, the, fun uh, the function should look like in our um, string. So our desired class was string. So we said that well, it, it should have, it should have a, 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 a assignment operator that takes as argument a character sequence, a pointer to a character sequence, and so on. So this is the first step. We did that for um, the other operator assignment, uh, string to string assignment. Then we did this for concatenation based on plus, print and then we also decided well we should be able to have this operator open square bracket, close square bracket, right? The indexing into the string class and the, <clears throat> then we had to take care of the second part which is step 2, define each function as its behavior, expected behavior becomes clear, okay. So for many of the uh, uh, programming assignments I had released, the one optional programming assignments I had released practice uh, be beyond ungraded labs. Specifically for those programs, I mean you can you can try and practice these steps, right? So uh, we did this in the last class also. We unfolded that string class co corresponding to each textual definition, textual description. So this is a habit you can all develop. Otherwise, I've seen that in the in some of the ungraded labs, uh, several of you are just paralyzed. You're just staring at the screen, no doing, not knowing what to do next. So start def doing this. Right? Start designing the signature. Signature by signature, I mean something like this, right, the fact that string operator plus should take string RHS as uh, uh, input and return another string. So start designing these signatures and we did this in the last class, we, we completed our <coughs> string class definition, we had uh, our, of course our hero was the pointer to the uh, character sequence and uh, the rest were just basically to help assign this pointer correctly and we kept a, a, a one very important point was um, something that we tested you also in your in your quiz okay so we tested this that you should you should have no memory leaks, no dangling pointers, okay. So with that in mind, to avoid memory leaks and dangling pointers, we ensured that we deleted the pointer before any assignment, unless you have a constructor. In a constructor call, there is no scope for pointer being already assigned, right. Other than that, you always delete, say play safe. And then we also uh, wrote these functions length and s copy, which are uh, heavily reused, we ensured that uh, every string is read keeping in mind that it ends with a null, backslash 0 is a null character, null char uh, character will help you determine the length and therefore when you assign to, assign space to a new uh, character sequence, you ensure that you budget for the backslash 0 again. The rest was uh, fairly straightforward. Uh, we did this for also the assignment operator which takes as argument a string instead of a character sequence and this 
just make sure that if you are doing a equals a, you are not unnecessarily uh, allocating more space. Thereafter, you call the previous equal to operator. This is the operator equal to which uh, takes const cas star RHS as input. Then we also saw the um, open square bracket score uh, close square bracket operator which uh, is very simple it just returns the ith character ith uh, character with index i in the character sequence pointer. The rest was about the constructor and the destructor respectively again uh, constructor you did not have to delete the pointer. This is only probably the only case where we did not overdo the task of deleting things otherwise we love to delete before we assign but here it was not necessary. And then the concatenation operator again uh, this uh, easiest illustrated through let us say I have PTR equals PQR as a string and RHS was ABC. The first thing you do is allocate space corresponding to the length of PTR which is 3, the length of RHS which is 3 and uh, you also budget for the null character at the end. So, this was basically 7 and then you do a copy, you copy from copy into result dot pointer pqr and then starting at uh, index 3 where pqr ended you start introducing your remaining string abc. So, that is what concatenation does pqr plus abc equals pqr abc. Okay, so this was our uh, just quickly illustrate what we did. Sorry. Okay, this was our string class, and when we now call it string ABC A equals PQR, it is basically calling the uh, ca character sequence based assignment B equals STU. Again character sequence based assignment instead you could have also had b equals a so both the first and the second are character sequence based assignments and then uh, I could print b I could assign a to c I could print c and then I could have another block in which I have another C which creates a new activation frame this new C can be A plus B and I could print that. However, once I exit the activation block for uh, in which the local C was defined I get back to the old C which was PQR and here if I uh, for example here I do a C2 this C2 is corresponding to the second character in the character sequence PQR. I could also have arrays of strings for example, array of size 2 I could assign to each element of the array like I do for any string class ok. So, this is uh, now what I want you to do is help me uh, complete this use of the string class where I am reading names of people students 100 names and assigning and storing them each name I wanted the, it to have variable length. So, just help me fill up those two lines what would you do? So, everyone with notebooks so Sonak just ensure that everyone is writing. So, we will have a lot of writing exercise now. So, this is very simple two lines.
Okay. So this buffer is being used to temporarily store a name whose length I don't know, but it could be up to 80 characters. There's temporary storage for the character sequence. Okay, so obviously I expect that once buffer is assigned, names i should be assigned using the string assignment operator. So the second line should be very straightforward, names i equals buffer, it should be very straightforward. That is what we want. What should be the line before that? Okay, so one way what some of you are suggesting is okay, C in C in buffer. You could do this. Now, interestingly, C in is not as boring, I mean so far we have only seen greater than, greater than, right, that is the only operator, but C in has plenty of other operators, okay, so C in has other operators as well. Okay, so if you are interested, do the following go to C plus plus dot com slash reference. Okay, and uh, look at so what is C in? C is an object of type I stream. Okay, so let us look at iStream. So here are, here is iStream, C in iStream, you can look at, um, so at the top you can see basically what is the uh, basic overall design of different classes associated with iStream. So there is IO stream, IF stream and so on, those, those, those are special cases, but we will we'll talk about that little later. But uh, this itself has multiple functions and there is in, uh, interestingly I think there will be a function called get line, there is a function called get line. You click on this and uh, so get line can actually read a fixed number of characters let us say n, uh, n characters, but you could also read characters up to some particular delimiter. So, I will say oh if there are comma separated, why should I read the comma into my um, name, comma separated names. So, every name before the comma will be read as one name. So, I can actually make use of all of these, right. So, the question is Why not something like this? C in dot get line. So let us say I want to read into buffer. Up to 80 characters is fine, but I want to read, let us say, comma separated. Okay, the single quote, it's a character. So what am I saying here? I am saying that. read until comma because you have comma separated names. Okay, so now we get into this world of predefined libraries, predefined classes whose functions I can make use of and now see in which something we have been using from day one suddenly appears more rich because we now see we see C in as an instance of a class which has many other functions to offer. 
okay so one example is this c in dot get line buffer at i can do the same thing as what we did what i did earlier but i could also do c in dot get line buffer at comma a character comma character or a tab character or any other character you want so uh, of course uh, as far as string is concerned we have uh, already taken care of memory allocation and uh, memory leaks have been avoided so this we are assuming is sound because of the design of the string class no memory leaks etc oh, i mean i expect the same thing from c in also it should not that the, be that c in in reading is creating is hogging up your heap so every mem every predefined class that i'm going to re use reuse needs to give me this assurance string is our defined class c in is someone else's defined class i mean ob object of uh, i stream defined by someone else okay so the class string that we have defined performs memory allocation deallocation behind the scenes automatically from the point of view of the user they are as simple as int variables but we are tumhe hi kaam kiya why because our fav, uh, our c++ dot com already has a string class but I, obviously i was not wasting your time i wanted you to tell uh, you to be convinced of how hard they have worked okay sometimes it's good to appreciate others hard work but if you go to again c++ dot com and references reference and, and look at string you will find this small string ours is capital string that's a small string okay so you can quickly just say string okay now you can see a predefined string and we'll see very soon we'll see what are the functions it offers that also of offers operators but before i move there one last point i want to tell you so what we did while reading names is we said we'll have 100 names and for each of the names we have a dynamically allocated memory but suppose i have an array of strings i don't even know the number of names i'll read what will i do okay so i'm looking at array of strings i do not know number of names to read okay so then my question to you is can i do something like this char star star double star how many stars can i keep putting like this ek star to dekh liya so i have two stars is this allowed i take n as an input in input integer so n is the number of names and i am saying string of strings equals new something is that allowed can i do this any of you feel aage mat badho this is wrong and i'll tell you well what i'm attempting to do then you can further guide me so this is my heap and in my heap i'm trying to do the following i'm trying to create a continuous block of pointers to characters so let's say char star char star this is a block an array of pointers to characters of variable length n this is what i want to do why because as i said i don't know the number of names to be read i the user will tell me how many names to read and then each name i get i will allocate some space in the heap 
what will i do for each name i'll say okay this name of particular length this name very short name this name is another very long name it's all heap this is all heap only this is what i'm trying to do each of these names will be contiguous block and our contiguous block of character pointers pointers to character so if i am trying to do that 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 looks reasonable what i am trying to do somebody may say oh why not do two dimensional array i'll tell you that two dimensional array i can do it but that will not be on the heap okay i can do the following char so there are two issues with doing this one is it's on the stack the function stack will be destroyed once you exit the function if you want to pass from one function to another function you have to copy painful right so on stack must be copied on return can i have variable length arguments here like this mnn can i make this mnn so char mn is generally not possible i mean especially if you are in a struct in fact even outside you cannot be doing this you can't take both as uh, you know input from the user so there are the, the heap is actually a lot more sensible so now can tell me how do i complete the program so this is what i am doing i am not doing this i am doing this and my step 1 is here my step 1 is what i am trying to show there so tell me what should this be new what please everyone should have their notebooks open help me complete this program new what should it be a new char in bracket n am i creating a character sequence of length n okay so his question is is it like creating a pointer to an array of pointers yes that's exactly what we are doing so where will our string of strings be pointing or string of strings will be pointing here that's what we wanted to be pointing pointer to a to an array of character pointers each of this is of type char star can now help me complete sonak is available please ask the ta if you have any doubts but everyone should have notes so sonak ensure that everyone is writing yes you got it yeah. okay so some of you have got it it's new char star okay so new char star n this will work okay so new char star n now for each name so this this is getting me this pointer and now for each of them i have this index i which is going over all these character pointers and for each character pointer including the ith pointer here what will i do what's the next step new so i have taken as input the length of this character sequence so let's say this has length m1 this has length mi mn okay the length m is accepted as input from the user this is a variable so for i 
I'll need a Mi length character sequence. So, what will this be? Mi in the sense is M only. Just, just remove the any suffix. So, what does this will be? New char M. Now the, the program is over. That's it. I mean, after this, you'll read. You'll use your C in dot get line, whatever you want. So you can do this. C in dot get line. Um, let me move this below. Okay, string of strings i, how many should I now? How many can I accept? I know the length of the nth character sequence. So, n i character sequence, I can just directly say m. I can do this. That is it. Or I can just do a c in a redirect to string of strings, whatever you want. Okay, so basically you will read in, somehow you will read in the string of strings i. Okay, so this program should run, should compile and run. I will uh, disable these print statements, just have to read them. Okay, so this will just run. So you, you say 5 and then 1, 2, 6, 3, 1. So it has, it has assigned. Uh, this has become, there are 5 char stars, the length of the first is 1, the length of the second is 2, the length of the third is, the, the uh, length of the array pointed to by the third is 6, then 3 and then 1. So, these lengths are varying. Okay, so, okay. so this is dynamic memory allocation for array of strings. Any questions? So, now we will move to standard library the world of uh, lots of predefined classes predefined functions we saw seen already got a flavor of that and uh, the string that we have painstakingly defined is already there in standard library and we saw this uh, example string this is this uh, uh, matter of chapter 22 of professor anade's book So, the standard library comes with every C++ distribution, okay. So, all you need to do is for example, hash include. So, for example, if you do a hash include string, and I will show you this, hash include string, we will be very soon seeing this, but hash include string, that is it or hash include IO stream. All of these IO stream, string, etc., are part of standard library. By including that, you are saying all the classes available with that uh, associated with that string should be available. And uh, sometimes it happens that it also calls some other classes. So that uh, that uh, inclusion is also part of uh, hash include. And uh, the classes have been optimized and debugged thoroughly, which means that there will be no error, which means that there will be no memory leak. Not that you keep creating string and some other printer program of your stop, stops working. That will not happen because it should not have, not, these are designed to have no undesirable side effects. Okay, so as far as possible, hereafter try making use of functions and classes from this standard library. So what we'll do is now look at uh, quickly look at string class, which is already there, and then we'll move on to the notion of a template. The template will help you make more effective use of all the uh, 
classes and functions as part of the standard template library. Okay, so the notion of a template will help us, for example, define vectors, multidimensional vectors. You can use a template. There's a template class vector. There's a template class map. So template will like occupy a couple of lectures from now. So we'll quickly recap the string class and move to the others. Now the string class that we have implemented uh, using the steps, the last class is a very powerful version because you can now modify it the way you want. On the other hand, the predefined string class will come with a bunch of functions. You can't necessarily change the semantics of those functions. But at the same time, the predefined uh, class has more constructors. So these are uh, useful characteristics. You can do plus concatenation that we saw, works with uh, no the redirection greater than, greater than, less than, less than. And you can also find substrings. You can find one string inside another. Okay, so here is an exercise for all of you. Again, your notebooks open. What I want you to get familiar with is using these uh, functions of string classes or, or any other class by applying a little bit of intuition. See, for every, every each of these definitions that you see here, for example, v dot substring, you can go to c++.com and find its definition. But you should also get a bit familiar with what they mean intuitively because the names of the functions have been designed intuitively. I mean, when you write a new function name, you will not say magic function. All that magic function does is find sum of integers. That is what we did in quiz 2, right? We had an unnecessarily heavily loaded name called magic. But all that magic did was finding sum of integers. So, using such, uh, you know, designing uh, whatever. <laughs> process in quiz is okay, but not in real life. In real life, magic should really do something magical. Okay, so let's look at what these are uh, do. But as I said, exact definitions in C plus plus dot com slash reference. And what I want you to do is fill up the intuitive definitions here. Okay. Please fill up these for me. So V2 equals V3. What do you think that should do? Okay. So is everyone sure that indexing for string should begin with 0? For arrays, we know it begins with 0. Is it necessary? No. The people who designed it wanted to maintain consistency. So they were no reasonable people. And therefore, they maintain the same indexing from 0. But it is not necessary. You could have your own indexing. Okay, So V2 equals V3. We expect the following. We expect D to replace C. We expect output to be D D A B D D A B. Okay. And that is exactly what happens. V becomes A B D D A B. Now tell me what the V dot substring 2 should be doing. Everyone, everyone should be answering. What do you think V dot substring 2 will do? Will it? Huh? Prints the first true, first true. How many of you believe that it might start at 2 and bring, print the substring after 2? How, why do you think so? Okay, so some of you are familiar with Java. What, any other reason? Any uh, non-Java reason? Yeah, and you, you, why do you believe it starts with 2 and then prints the remaining string? Okay, so she is thinking differently. She is saying that if you are doing substring 2, then it points the, uh, starts the pointer at 2. So the now it could have been done differently. Again, uh, many of these are designed based on more very common usage patterns. Okay, and indeed that's the case. V dot substring two. This will print substring beginning with D, right? Uh, the index 2. 
b dot substring 1 comma 3 that is pretty straightforward. So, v dot should bring substring from 1, 2, 3. So, that should be very straightforward. So, uh, the, the, again there can, there can be some confusion. Should it be the length of uh, substring of length 3 beginning at index 1 or should it be the substring from 1 to 3? Okay, so let us verify. So, what do you expect? It is actually the length, length 3. Okay, the, uh, the first one is starting with D index 2, the second one, say, second one says from index 1 that is B, B onwards the string with length 3, okay. So, the answer is from length 1 to, from 1 to 1 plus 3, well 1 plus 3 minus 1, index will 1 plus 3 minus 1. Basically index plus length minus 1. So, index to index plus length minus 1. Okay. So, you get the corresponding answer. What about v dot find? What should it do? Okay. How many of you feel it will find the number of instances of a, b? How many times does AB occur? There are exactly two occurrences, right? Two instances. This occurrence once, okay, I should look at the second one, but it, 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 uh, it did not change as such. This is the second occurrence. The two occurrences. So, V dot find, will it find the first occurrence, the second occurrence, or number of occurrences? So, it turns out that it finds the index of the first occurrence. Okay. What, what should that answer be? 0, that should be the answer. Okay. So, it finds occurrence of finds first occurrence and returns the index that is 0. What about v dot find a b comma 1? Um, so, it says that skip the first occurrence. Now, what is 1? 1 is the index or 1 is the occurrence? Find occurrence index. Okay. Starting after what? The first occurrence or the first index? Okay, so let us from index, it is a it is based on index, not on occurrence. Okay. From index 1. Actually, after is not appropriate, I should just say from. Okay. So, this kind of give you a flavor of uh, what all is possible, different interpretations, but what seems to be implemented again is um, not non intuitive, but it, uh, you might have a slightly different expectation though. So, uh, what should be the final output? What will be the, uh, the, the occurrence of index, uh, occurrence index of AB after 1, uh, after 0 rather? This is index 4, right? So, I will be 0, J will be 4. Okay, let us just verify.
Here is my string class, the same thing, exactly the same. So, 0 and 4. Okay, the, we will print out 0 and 4. Okay, so um, this way now you can look up C uh, reference and make use of many other classes. Now, one small uh, uh, question here. So, suppose I was uh, the my, my string was as follows. So, let us say my V was equal to P Q R A C B and I do a V dot find A R. What should V dot find A R return? Is there an occurrence of A R in V? There is not right. So, some of you are saying minus 1, no match means return minus 1, but why is minus 1, uh, I mean you expect it to be minus 1, but is it necessary that the implementation returns a very fixed integer? So, what C++ uh, does is for several of such classes, uh, the classes are designed such that even an uh, even a position is returned as an instance of a user defined type. So, if there is a user defined type called string npos, npos is a user defined type within string which is a value which cannot be a valid index. So, it is actually a value, it is not a user defined type, but it is a value corresponding to the user uh, to the user defined uh, class string and this corresponds to an invalid index. So, for example, I can do the following for this I can just say, so let us say I do i equals v dot uh, I mean I not uh, yeah i equals I can do it int, but instead of checking if int uh, if i equals equals minus 1 I will uh, I know minus 1 is something that may change with the implementer, but uh, I can just be safe and say if i equals equals string yeah, if i equals equals string colon colon n pause is basically saying that this is not this is an invalid position then you can say c out not found or whatever else you want okay case Yes. So, that is defined within string. The implementation of string cla class has defined, uh, you can think of it as a type, but uh, uh, it is not necessarily a, a complex type, it is just, it is a, it is an instance of, so for example, we will, we will very soon see something called size. Size itself also can be an int. But we know that sizes can never be negative. So, there is something called size underscore t, which uh, is again a type of, uh, uh, of int, it is an unsigned int, okay. But you play safe. So, instead of saying equals equals minus 1, you have this value, uh, it is like a const defined inside a, a string, but uh, you do not have to know the value of that const. So, n pause is just a const. You can also have uh, other functions, size, length that you invoke and then I, I, I mentioned this also, uh, there is a special type called size underscore t, which is basically a redef redefinition of unsigned int, okay. So, the string class provides ways by which you can uh, avoid wandering about checking whether the size is minus 1, no, by wander, it already gives you a const called n pos. A string object can be passed by value. In which case it is copied, it has its own copy constructor. You can also pass it by reference. So, again, you can refer to this um, um, function reference manual at c++.com, okay. So, uh, size underscore t is again th thought of, think of it as unsigned int, but uh, uh, for many sizes, it just makes sense to use size underscore t because you do not have to keep uh, remembering that 
it's an unsigned int because if by mistake if you just uh, you know, forget putting the prefix unsigned, you might have issues. So just play safe by saying size underscore t. So it's, it's a convenience. It's not it's not mandatory. So now uh, to make use of more sophisticated classes from C++, especially the standard template library, we'll need an additional very powerful notion, the notion of a template. Okay, it's a construct. You can have function templates, you can have class templates, but let's begin with function templates. Now let's say I have these three functions. I have int abs, float abs and double abs. All of them take the respective arguments int, float and double and then basically return the absolute value. So what, what do I do if I want to unite all of them? I, I want to basically have say one function. How many of you say, well, why define three? Double should do it all. Cast everything as a double. So why not cast everything as double? Any objections to doing this? So I'll, I'll let's say I cross off these two. Use only the right hand side. Okay, so and I, let's say I want to look at abs of recall what this means what will happen to this i cast i mean i, I cross off the first two and i do an abs of what does a 0x mean hexadecimal representation And let's say I treat this is this is a signed int. What is this value? The largest, the largest negative value. It starts with f, right? Will I will you have an issue? Now is double capable of handling this? So double has some much smaller space for the mantis r, right? So double will there will be an overflow. It's not largest, sorry, smallest. Smallest unsigned int, the most negative. I think you'll get overflow, maybe whatever. And this is owing to. This is going to limited space for mantissa, right? This limited space for mantissa compared to what int can afford. So this is not necessarily a good idea. And uh, why why not get the exact implementation? Why do we why, why do we want to even live with approximation? Why compromise at all? So, right? So why compromise at all and therefore templates say I'll give you additional structure by which you don't have to compromise. Okay, this is the option. They say well instead of passing, uh, instead of having a, a fixed notion of type, let there be something called absolute which takes so, uh, uh, an argument of type t, returns type t as long as the type t has a notion of minus, right? you should have minus for that type. And the minus operator could be defined by overloading, we know that. But as long as minus is defined, return, all I am doing is at the top, 
adding this additional uh, construct this template type name t. I am saying that the the type temp, the the function is templatized. Okay, so that I can take type t and return type t and perform an operation that is understandable to type t. And that is minus x. Minus x is an operation understandable to type t. I, of, I, also, the operation of x less than, and the less than also should be defined for that type t. So, now I can do this for vectors. See, the advantage is now t could become a vector v3 and I can look at its absolute value. I can do this for matrices as long as I can define less than and minus. So, this works. Is this clear? And now, we will we'll deal more with this, but let me now move to something that we are you are all so familiar with that you will be able to uh, quickly understand the notion of a template. We will now discuss template for class. So this, is, this is how you can template as a function, okay. This is function templates. But you can also have template class. Yeah, we'll we'll uh, we'll discuss more. Let's uh, I'll start with this. It's easier to relate. Uh, okay, how to call that function? We'll do that. So uh, and uh, in fact, I'll ask this as a question to you once we do this for class. So let's do this for class. Now I say the following: template class T for Q. Well, uh, remember the Q class which was used to queue up taxi drivers, right? And uh, how did we refer to taxi drivers? A hey, driver 1, come here. Driver 2, you are in the queue. Uh, do you look, like to be called that way? Student roll number 1005000, oh, well, 5036, that was my, my roll number <laughs> from my BTEC days. So, do you like to be called that way? You do not, right? You want names. I, I have a name. Use roll number in the database to assign grades, but not call me like that. So, why, why would drivers be any different? So, let us say I want to assign drivers by names. How do I do that? Well, I can do by names today, but tomorrow my mood changes. No, no, drivers have names and also IDs, right? And then day after tomorrow, drivers have names, IDs, they have first name, last name, they can have the state from where they come. Now, driver becomes a very complex object to deal with. Now, if I can templatize and say, well, this is a queue of anything you want. You change your driver, do not bother me every, every time with what is in the queue. So, this is how I am going to change, okay. Uh, so, I have template class T where my Q is of type T. What I queue up could be type T. So, what this T can be a string when I call them and here is here's the call. So, this call will make it make life uh, more interesting for you. So, when I call I say well this is a Q of vectors v3 or you could also say I could have a queue of strings, I could have a queue of int. So, that will mean that the queue object that you create t will become v3, t can become an int or t can become a string. But as far as the definition of queue is concerned, it is kept abstract, right. So, the it is a queue of elements of type T. The different changes are when I insert, I should say type T has to be inserted, or when I remove the queue from the queue, type T has to be removed. That is the only thing I need to take care of, okay. And we will do this exercise now. We will go back to our favorite Q class and see how to change all this. Okay, so this is, uh, so remember Q, 
this was our old queue struct queue and remember the program where we we said okay driver 3 assigned driver 5 assigned customer 1 comes 3 gets assigned customer 6 comes driver 5 gets assigned and so on and I put an x it exits this is my program I already implemented here right schedule at a function called scheduling taxis but now I want to try and try and change the struct you can change the struct or you can change the class I am illustrating on the slide with class in my program it is a struct ok but let us do that so this is everything is hardwired here it is int and I want to change it ok see so let us start template class t ok note down the first different first change we made what is the second change it cannot be an int uh, uh, an array of ints it has to be an array of t which is kept uh, you are deferring the choice of t So, I am in I am deferring the choice of t to instantiation instantiation in main where else will I change will n waiting in front have to become t no there is no need I mean that is an index into the array ok what else what else should change n waiting is equal source dot n waiting all of this does not matter as long as for t you have these defined does not matter so the constructor call does not change insert will this change well what do I insert that matters so I am not no longer inserting v I am inserting I no longer inserting int v I am inserting t v right so, differing the choice here we are differing the choice of t to instantiation in main like before. Remove, I am removing and then pass uh, and returning by reference uh, basically so is passed by reference so that the value can be assigned. So, this has to be t again the same thing I am differing the choice of t to instantiation in main. So, how many places I had to change? Remove, insert and elements that is it ok so what did I do template class t struct q t elements nothing changed here and then uh, bool bool insert tv bool remove t ampersand v these are the only four changes i had to have in my struct ok 1 2 3 3 3 uh, uh, 4 places I just have to say t will this work ah does not compile why because main uh, wherever the fun where I am creating the queue I there at least I have to specify the t na? t is not known so far so I had remember what I had said earlier I had said deferring the choice of t to instantiation in main so I have to do something in main now ok so in main what do I say q so now I will use this angular brackets again q 
of what? Q of, let us say I want to give names to my drivers, Q of strings, which means what I insert should also be a string, string driver. What I remove should also be a string, string driver. Will this work? I made exactly three changes. Okay, I am writing it down here. Q string Q for removing if C equals equals driver then to, uh, to insert string driver and whatever you want. If I have a customer, again I will have to remove the the small string, okay, small, the string from the standard template library. And what am I doing in these three calls? I am saying that the T that I have there should be treated as a string. The T that is inserted should be treated as a string. The T that gets removed should be treated as a string. These are the changes we made. Will it work now? Does it look logically uh, consistent? Let us see if it runs. Okay, it ran. And now what do I do? So, I will say D driver, I can give names, Raghu, D Manish and then customers, customers only have IDs, okay. Not so much respect for them so far. So, customer 2, Raghu gets assigned, customer, one more driver, let us put D. Rohit and then C. So, I assign Manish from the past and while poor Rohit is still in the queue, I exit and I get a warning, queue not empty. So, Rohit will be scheduled tomorrow, okay. So, we will continue with this, uh, this discussion, but uh, this is a very interesting, uh, very powerful construct. We now have the quiz.